Welcome back guys, so this has to be one of the worst Android emulator launches ever seen. Daemon team has finally released their Daemon Switch emulator. But you can't play any games, nothing is working as of now. Even the ads are not popping up, I am not joking, we'll be showing you this in the later part. Now before we proceed further, let me explain a few things. In the past, this team has released a controversial PlayStation 2 emulator called Daemon PS2. It is still available on Play Store. This emulator is allegedly running on code stolen from PCSS2 emulator. Its free version is full of ads, controller support and a lot of settings are locked behind a paid version. Requires internet connection to run games. This application was put to its misery by the free version of EtherSS2 emulator. Now the same thing is happening with the Switch Android emulation scene. Personally, I don't recommend using this emulator. I won't be accepting any gameplay requests for it. I may show a few gameplay videos comparing the performance of this emulator with the free version of Skyline Switch Android emulator. On Android, we have another such rogue switch emulator called EggNS. It is allegedly running on code stolen from Yuzu emulator. Personally, on Android, I only recommend Skyline Switch emulator. It is absolutely free, does not require any internet connection in order to run the games. If you want to support the developers, you can subscribe to their Patreon page. You will be getting access to Skyline's Edge build. It comes with the latest updates. All of these updates make their way to the public build in about two weeks. The only good thing here with Daemon Switch Emulator is that it is available on Play Store. You don't have to download it from any shady website. The emulator adheres to the scope storage requirement of Android 12. It gives us two options for the purpose of storing its files. We can either choose from the hidden directory that is present in the Android folder that itself is present in the root directory of a mobile phone or just specify a directory of our own. This is the root directory of my mobile phone. Here I have created a folder and named it as switch. You can name it anything you want. I'll be using this directory for the purpose of storing daemon switch emulators files. If you're planning on testing this emulator, just make sure you download the build from this developer, daemon ps2 emulator studio. Play store is filled with a lot of fake applications. Open. When you open it for the first time, the application will ask for these permissions. Permission to access storage device, permission to access device information and permission to access our rough location. This is the part where we need to specify the directory where the game data will be saved. There is my switch folder in the root directory. Use this folder. Allow. You can see requesting add but it won't pop up nothing is working i gained access to the emulator just like this this is the emulator's home interface similar to daemon ps2 this icon belongs to yuzu emulator in order to run games using any switch emulator you need to provide the prod key and switch firmware files these files along with the switch games are copyrighted software you are supposed to use your own files i won't be giving you any links to them now let me just show you the emulator setting we have the system settings here. Frame rate cap set to 1000x. Not sure what that means. Limit speed percent enable value set to 100%. Basically tweaking the clock speed of switches CPU. Lowering the value can help in improving the performance in some games by introducing a frame skip like mechanism. Multi-core CPU emulation enabled. Dock model set to enable. I'll just set it to disable. So I can change this setting even with the free version. Talk mode basically increases the game's internal resolution and also improves the graphical fidelity, thereby increasing the load on the processor. If you don't want your mobile phone to fry, just set it to disable. Language English. A lot of other languages are present. CPU settings. Interesting. Accuracy set to auto. Enable fast memory setting set to enable. Graphics setting. Here there are a lot of log settings if I try to access any one of them. This prompt shows up asking me to pay for the professional edition of other features. I can change the resolution it seems in the free version. Can't go higher than 1x. 1x here is 720p resolution in the undocked mode. Full HD resolution in the dock mode. Fractional resolution scaling is supported. It's in experimental stage. 0.5 and 0.75x resolutions values have been shown here. I won't recommend going over 1x resolution anyways in order to avoid overheating. The emulator features asynchronous shader compilation. 
they most probably borrowed it from yuzu without asking them this setting is in experimental stage it helps in reducing stuttering when the shader cache gets compiled with the free version this setting is disabled and locked then we have the control setting in the free version we have access to the touch controls gamepad support is locked need to pay in order to unlock it now i'll be covering the different builds of the emulator just go back to the home interface tap on the me section here tap on this icon first we have the free build game fps normal not sure what this means offline play not supported there is a condition attached with the offline play the app will periodically check permissions online this makes no sense so the emulator isn't actually offline ads will be present in the free version won't be able to customize the virtual buttons gamepad is not supported complete game parameter settings are not unlocked hd quality is not present again this makes no sense one x resolution with the free version supports 720p resolution in the undocked mode itself then we have the professional build this one costs rupees 300 game fps fastest now i see basically the developers are trying to imply this build will give you the best performance offline play supported Again, the condition is attached. App will periodically check permissions online. No ads enabled. We can customize the virtual buttons. Gamepad is supported. All settings unlocked. HD quality. Then we have the premium build. The one that costs half of it. Game FPS normal, just like the free build. Offline play not supported. Ads will be present. We can customize the virtual controls. Gamepad is supported. Settings unlocked. HD quality. That's it. I'm not purchasing any of these builds. In case you want to purchase the Pro Edition, you can buy it from the free version itself. Just tap here, tap on this banner, select your payment mode and just tap on buy here. You can scan for the game ROMs present in the emulator's file directory. Just need to tap on scan ROMs. This feature is not working properly. Here it's mentioned scan file 6, discovered ROM 0, that's not true. So in order to manually launch any game, just tap on the browse section here. You can see my games. I'll just tap on Metroid Dread. Game won't start, cannot start the game because the file is not a Switch game ROM. That's not true. Undertale, NSP file, it also did not start. That's it with the tutorial video guys. In the end, I would say that this emulator is looking similar to Daemon PS2. I won't be surprised at all if this information comes out that daemon team borrowed code from another emulator without the permission of that emulator's developers think wisely before supporting such emulators personally i don't recommend using it but i am well aware of the fact that a lot of people are going to use it especially the ones living in developing countries i'll end the video here guys i hope you found it useful thanks for watching and have a nice day